What's going on guys, welcome back to my personal channel, welcome back to another review now. Before I start this review, I just want to say if you guys haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe to my personal channel, and don't forget to press the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever I upload any new content. Now, it's Chelsea 2, Manchester City 1, Lampard has taken a big scalp here today, and everyone's going to be talking about Liverpool, because Liverpool's won their first Premier League title in 30 years off the back of this result, but let's talk about Chelsea, and Manchester City came in, they knew exactly what they needed to do, anything but a win would hand their title over to their Merseyside rivals, and they struggled. I was, they dominate for large periods, but they struggled to break through us. And I think Frank Lampard managed Frank Lampard and the Chelsea boys managed this performance spectacularly. Manchester City dominate possession, and they were so deadly in the press as well. It was so hard to get the ball out of their midfield. It was even harder to try and break the press once we got the ball from them. And it was a struggle. It was a huge struggle, at, but we kept being patient and we waited for the right moment and that's exactly what this game was about. I'd like to say this game had vibes of 2012 Barcelona versus Chelsea but only certain vibes because I still know that's a very big statement to make but there was similarities to it. They dominated possession but we were patient. We had an attacking formation which was very surprising because I thought Lampard was going to set up in a much more defensive formation to the last game. But they set in an attacking formation. It looked like it was going to be end-to-end -end stuff, but we still sat back. We kept our defensive shape, and we were patient, and we waited for Man City to make mistakes. Man City had the majority of the possession. They were trying to find their way through us. Some of the passes were very dangerous, so we had to anticipate those balls in between the lines that the players like Raheem Sterling and Riyad Mahrez would be pushing forward with. But it was all about being patient, being smart on the one-on-ones and having confidence. And the players were brilliant today and they had that in abundance. Talking about the players, I think Christensen, personally, I'm going to call him man of the match in my opinion. I thought he was excellent today. The whole defence, in fact. I think Marcos Alonso did struggle a little bit when they were quickly switching the play down to the left side. Only because he is naturally the slowest player out of the back four and it was going to be a bit slower for him to get back across to that side but I still think he handled himself pretty well and when he didn't have that day he had Andreas Christensen with him for support Andreas Christensen completely ran the show today defensively him and Antonio Rudiger Rudiger may have had the odd error or two but Andreas Christensen was all over everything he had a hundred percent uh was a hundred percent tackles Nearly 100% pass rate, I think it was 93 or something like that. And he was looking a lot more like the Andreas Christensen of old under Antonio Conte that was playing every week and looked like one of the best defenders in the league until that Barcelona game where there was a mistake for that Messi goal. But he's turned it around this season. And if you look at the transformation of Andreas Christensen as a defender, it's been immense. Andreas Christensen, at the start of the season, there were so many questions about whether he was still the player to be playing for Chelsea, whether he still had... Whether he still had the potential to be the player that we thought he was going to be. And in some games, like Everton away, for example, just looked weak, just looked off the pace. And it looks like a completely different Andreas Christensen those last few months. And I know there's been fans that have been supporting him from the start. And they're going to be so gassed off that performance today. Midfield, I think... In fact, for the midfield, as for Equator as well, Raheem Sterling asked a lot of questions. And Raheem Sterling didn't have a bad game today either. He nearly scored, but he hit the post. But as for Equator was on him most of the match, and he did not give him an easy game today. Raheem Sterling didn't struggle today either. I'm not even going to say that, because Raheem Sterling, I don't think, had a bad match. I think as for Equator was just on him. And in the 50-50s, I think as for Equator just managed to get the better of him for the majority of it. Uh, the first goal, the first goal was just a mate. It had shades of Denver Bar and Steven Gerrard where there was a little slip. Instead of the slip, it was a drop in possession. And Christian Pulisic was just so smart on the ball and the composure to still be able to beat those two players because the job wasn't done when he received the ball. He still had to beat Gundahan and Mendy. And he did that. He beat Mendy on the one-on-one -on -one, and then he went round to Edison and beat him on the one-on-one -on -one as well. Christian Pulisic had a lot of work to do and he showed exactly why we've been missing him this season. I thought he had an amazing amazing performance today. The only reason why I'm not giving him man of the match is because of how good Christensen was. Second goal as well, after De Bruyne's free kick, which was a spectacular free kick and Kepa wasn't doing anything about it. Nothing against Kepa. It was, it was a great free kick and it's just De Bruyne showing why we shouldn't have sold him. But we still kept our heads up. We didn't let our heads drop because there was still pressure coming on after that. Sterling's chance where he hit the post. But we kept our heads down. We kept to game plan. 
players didn't let their heads drop and we just kept patient and waited for opportunities to show themselves and opportunities continued to show themselves Fernandinho in defence was always going to be a question mark and it showed itself again today uh, there was like two big chances on the goal line. The first one, I think it just managed to get taken out by Carl Walker at the end. And the second one was a Fernandinho handball, which led to the eventual penalty, penalty that Willian took to make it 2-1 Chelsea. Bar that, it was more or less about holding on for the game. Then Manchester City tried to push forwards, but you could see their heads start to drop as the game progressed. They knew it was a tough game for them. And not even using that to try and be cocky or anything. Chelsea were just brilliant today. Chelsea's game plan today was excellent. They were smart and they kept Manchester City solid. I'm going to go into the player ratings now. Kepa, I don't think he had a bad game. I think his distribution wasn't great at times, but I think when called upon, he made the right saves. I think I'll, I'll just give him a five today. As for Equator, I feel like giving him a seven. I think he had a very hard job today under Raheem Sterling, but he did his job superbly well. Yeah, I'll, I'm, I'm going to push As for Equator for a second. Going forward, he was smart. He made the smart passes at the right time, and I think. His ball to Willian was, I think, part of their build-up towards the penalty that led to the second goal as well. So he kept himself involved in the attacking phase as well. As for Luquet, I'm going to give a, seg a 7. Rudiger, I'm pushing between a 6 or a 7. I might give him a 6.5 because I don't think he had a bad performance. I think As for Luquet was a bit more solid than him. I think Christensen was my man of the match. I'm going to lead to that. I'm going to push Rudiger to about a 6. Uh, yeah, six. Six and a half. I'm going to push Rudiger to six and a half. I don't think he had a bad game, but I still think Azpilicueta and Christensen are better performances, so I'm going to give him a six and a half. Andreas Christensen, I'm going to give him a nine. Yeah, I'm going to give him a nine. His performance today was out of this world. Strength on the ball, brilliant. He was getting himself into those 50-50 challenges. He wasn't looking scared. On the ball, his passing was superb. Barely put a foot wrong all of today. Christensen gets a, what did I say? I gave him an eight, didn't I? Yeah, I'm going to give him an eight. Marcus Alonso, I don't think he struggled with Mares at times, but he had Christensen for support. And regardless, I still don't think he had a bad game anyway. So I'm going to give him a six. I don't think it was a bad performance from Marcus Alonso. And Golo Kante, defensively very solid, and he was key to getting the ball out of Manchester City's press, uh, out of Manchester City's attack half the time. Did struggle with the passing at times. His passing did look a little bit sloppy, but I think for the most part. Did his job. He was a deep line playmaker defensively. His job was to be the most defensive out of the three, and I think he did his job perfectly. Mason Mount, the press, the attacking press goes through him half the time. He's always the first one bursting forward, trying to make those presses or trying to ask questions of the Manchester City defence. And I think today was another performance where he showed exactly why he's one of the play he's been one of the standout players for us this season he had a lot of unnecessary stick around december and i said it was because he was burnt out but his execution has improved so much today he was very unlucky not to get a goal either he had a shot that hit the side netting but i think for the most part he had a good performance today so i'm going to give him that uh ross barkley I think progressed the ball pretty decently. Uh, Mason Mount didn't give him a rating, by the way. Mason Mount, I'm going to give a 7. Ross Barkley, I think... I'm going to give him a 6. I think he struggled with Manchester City's press at times, and he did give the ball away a good couple times. Progressed the ball fairly good. I don't think he had a bad performance. I'm not going to say that about any of the Chelsea players today, to be honest. Ross Barkley, I'm going to give a 6. Uh, William, I think for the... I'm going to give a six and a half because I think progressing the ball, he wasn't that bad. His corners were pretty solid today, to be fair. It was one day at the first man. But other than that, all the majority of them were a little bit threatened. I think he progressed the ball well as well. So for William, I'm going to give a six and a half. Olivier Giroud, I think, did well to bring William Pulisic into the game a little bit more. Struggled for chances. But for the most part, he had a. But for the most part, he was solid and he was good at holding the ball up and progressing the play a little bit more. So I'm going to give for Olivier Giroud a uh, six and a half. I don't think he was as influential as some of the other attackers, but I don't think he had a bad performance as well. So I'm going to give him a six and a half. Pulisic, I'm going to give a seven and a half. Every time he was on the ball t in the final third, there was a threat. Off the ball movement, brilliant. The first goal speaks for itself. He did so well to get the ball out of that... He did so well to get the ball and then to beat both Silva and Mendy. Was it Silva and Mendy? 
no, Gundahan and Mendy. He did well to beat both Gundahan and Mendy, and then to beat um, Edison as well. And from then on, he continued to kick on. Most of the attacks when they were coming through from him looked very dangerous. It was a shame not to see him for the full 90 minutes, but he was one of our standout players. And the only reason why I don't give him my man the match is because of Andreas Christensen's performance. Looking at the bench, uh, Mateo Kovacic was a necessary substitution because we needed him. His his ability to get the ball out of dangerous situations and to get the ball out of pressure is unmatched and to be honest we could have done with a fully fit Kovacic from the start but the midfield is our strongest point and it showed itself again today Kovacic I'm going to give a 6 Pedro I uh, there was a good ball into him from Billy Gilmore but other than that, I don't think there was much action from him. I can't give him a rating. Gilmore, I'm going to push him up to a six just because of that ball to Pedro because that could have been something good. And Tammy Abraham, again, not going to give a rating. I don't think he was on the pitch. Actually, no, 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 no. Tammy Abraham was part of the build-up that led to the second goal. So I'm going to give him a six as well. He did well to keep himself involved for the last 20 minutes because we didn't really see him that involved in the Villa game. So it's good to see him get a bit more back into full match fitness. Guys, let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the reigns or any of the comments that I've made. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. It's Chelsea 2, Manchester City 1. A big win in the race for top 4 and potentially in the race for top 3 as well. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you guys very, very soon. Take care and up the Chelsea.